Okay, we're good to go. Hi, hi everyone. How are you players? Thank you for joining us. Good to see you all. We're all set. A huge uh, thank you for our Rajasthan Royals for joining us uh, for this event and to all our contest winners. Uh, it's uh, contest winners from Hapilo. Thank you so much. The team from Hapilo as well. Um, it's an absolute privilege every time I get asked to do events like this because I get to see the interaction between the players and the fans. And I think that's absolutely uh, thrilling. So I will be asking uh, questions to our Royals on your behalf. So I do hope you enjoy this uh, interaction. And uh, I mean, huge round of applause if you can for the Rajasthan Royals, the way that you started this season. Exactly, Rian, well done. <laughs> you especially from the last game because uh, you've just been inspiring and, uh, you know, keep it going. I know we're all superstitious, but keep it going, guys. I mean, absolutely living up to uh, Hala Bulls. So let's get this started. We want to hear from you. I'd also like to say a big hello to Mr. Vikas Tinahar, the founder of uh, Happylo. Uh, Mr. Vikas, if I could just get you to chime in uh, to, you know, Joss Butler, Daryl Mitchell and Rian Parag from the Rajasthan Royals who joined us. Tell me more about this association with the Rajasthan Royals, uh, Mr. Vikas. What has it meant to you? What has it meant to Happy Low? Hi, just checking in, Mr. Vikas. Could you hear me? So I think he just rejoined. I think he'll be able to hear us. Right okay, now. no worries. We'll yeah. wait a little bit till Mr. Vikas is audible to all of us. How are you guys? Joss, are you exhausted yet? No, um, I'm well, thank you. Um, yeah, as you said, we've um, you know we've had a really good start to the tournament, so um, you know, we're all enjoying that. Um, everyone's been um, really playing their roles very well, and um, you know, managing to to be near the top of the table, which is great um, coming into the business end of the tournament. So, Joss, I'm sure you are aware of the fact that you scored 499 runs, and I think you've been asked about your form about 500 times. So, I'm just going to even it out and say 500 yet, but. Uh, what have you done differently? Because often you see, you expect someone to just, you know, see ball, hit ball, just the boss butler, but you've actually spent considerable amount of times, you know, building a T20 inning. So what have you done differently this season around to have to already have scored three centuries? Um, I just tried to play the conditions that I've seen in front of me. Um, now, give myself a little bit of time at the start of the innings is not always the way you want to play. You want to just get off and, and um, get off to a fast start all the time. But um, I was certainly giving myself a chance and, and just try to read the situation as um, as I see fit and um, attack when I feel like I can attack and um, sometimes just sort of swallow your ego a bit and then get down the other end if, if you're not feeling as comfortable. Yeah. Well, Rian, I mean, you really came to the party in the last game. That was your first half century of, you know, this season. And I love what you spoke about the fact that, you know, this is a team that's invested in me. They've showed a lot of faith. I want, to I want you to take me back a couple of years ago when, you know, you were bought in the auction by a team like Rajasthan Royals who were the inaugural champions. I mean, what was that moment like for you? Uh, it was beautiful. I think uh, all budding cricketers, all the young cricketers in India always want to play the IPL. And I got my break in 2019. And I think that was almost a dream come true. And to play a few matches as well. And I was contributing to my team. So that was perfect. Daryl, for you, so you debuted for Rajasthan Royals in the last game. Um, you know, personally, tell me about that because you've got a team that is like a winning machine, right? You've got the orange cap and the purple cap in this team. So it's immediately to be inserted into that setup and just, you know, carry the momentum forward. What's that whole experience like? Yeah, obviously the, the first experience of the IPL is, is pretty cool, and to be part of this Rajasthan Royal squad, it's um yeah, it's a, a top squad. I think we've really recruited really well in the auction, and yeah, to get a game last game was awesome. Um, it was nice to come away with the win and, and get the job done. And I know we're looking forward to the next few games and hopefully some finals as well. So obviously you're all now getting used to doing virtual events because it's different times that we live in and, you know, we're all in bio bubbles and things like that. So I think that's one of the things that a lot of your fans want to know. How do you keep it going in a bio bubble? How do you keep the momentum going, the spirits up? Because it can be really isolating, you know. So Joss, is that now three seasons or three IPL or four IPL seasons that have been in a bubble? How do you kind of keep it going as a franchise and personally? Yeah, I think um, you know, personally, yes, there's plenty of time on, on Netflix or... Um, <laughs> what are you watching there? Your favorite? Um, some trash <laughs> TV called Below Deck, which is... Um, That's great pretty good though. <laughs> and, uh, or Peaky Blinders, I've finished that one off. Um, and uh, but no, I think you know, one thing that Rajasthan Royals have always done really well, actually, is, is 
try and put on little events or some fun games. Um, you know, try and keep the spirits high. Um, you know, we've managed to get out and play golf a couple of times, which has been sort of a, a godsend, really, to get some time outside the hotel as well, which isn't just going to the cricket ground. And Rian, how many stuffed animals did you bring in with you to the bio bubble? That's what your fans want to know. I got four <laughs> with me. And I got a few from Cartoon Network and okay. one more on the person, so give me one. So I've got like six or seven now. So what, what are they? I mean, are they animals or like, what is it? Can you describe? So four of my kids, they're like proper animals. So like okay. retrievers, labs, beagles, and a husky. And I have names for them. But the other ones are just like Tom and Jerry and all that. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Daryl, what's it like walking into this atmosphere when you have some incredibly experienced players and then you have someone like Rian, who I'm sure will spend a lot of time with my son because he's into the stuffed animals. What's that like? What's that team dynamic like? Especially, you know, in a There's bubble. A we have. Yeah, Rian's my next door neighbour in the hotel. So, uh, yeah, I'll snuck over to his room. A few. He's got a few little treats and lollies in his room as well. So, we <laughs> we got that, but no, nah, it's, it's good. It's a good group. Obviously, I've got two other Kiwis here with me, which makes it a little bit easier. And, and Joss is pretty much our adopted son as well. So um, we've got a good little crew going and it's good fun. Yeah, well, you said treats and lollies. I'm sure Happy Low has provided you with quite a few of the healthy snacks because, you know, they're all over the Indian market now. And especially to be uh, teaming up with athletes where you want instant energy and you want it to taste good. I mean, Happy Low with your cashews and almonds, even, I mean, my son loves it. He's not even two years old. He's looking for all the gems inside. In fact, uh, Mr. Vikas Tehana Nahar, thank you so much for joining us. You're on the road, so I can understand it's very taxing for you. But, um, you know, tell yep. me more about this. Thanks, so thanks man. With the Rajasthan Royals, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to Hapilo? No, I think uh, uh, it's a it's a great association. I think that there's a lot of synergies, uh, you know, where uh, Rajasthan and the Hapilo actually come together. And uh, you know, I think Rajasthan Royals, I think, a great fan of the team, uh, promote a lot of young talent. Especially, I think we talk about even this season. Uh, if you see uh, uh, how they have backed, uh, you know, Ryan Parag, you know, over the seasons and how good he has come up recently, you know. So that shows that they back a lot of talent and, you know, and they've always been uh, a team which, you know, I think that was their first, uh, you know, inaugural champions as well. Yes. And, uh, you know, hopefully with the association this year, I think we'll win the trophy for the second time. And, you know, talk about Happy Low, I think uh, we are a young uh, brand, you know, uh, like five, six years old and we wanted to make a mark uh, both nationally and internationally. So we thought what better platform than IPL and what better team than Rice Conference. Absolutely. No, and uh, Rajasthan Royals are certainly setting the way. So, Joss, now that's, you know, it's funny, you're playing at four venues, okay? So, you've scored centuries in three of them. One is still pending. But all over India that you've played, what has been one of your favourite venues and, you know, why so? Um, I think for me, I'd always say um, the one KD Stadium. I think, um, you know, my first experience of the IPL was, was with the Mumbai Indians. So I had a, a two seasons um, as that was the home ground. And, um, you know, so I think always have fond memories of, of that. Um, it's, it's obviously a fantastic place to bat. Um, you know, and it, I think any time you get a chance to, to go and play there, if you, could, if you can get in, it's a great place to, to play as a batsman. So um, the crowd there is fantastic, but, you know, the sort of, the way the stadium's built really keeps the sound in and it's, um, it's quite an amazing atmosphere. So you know, I love playing at that ground. Rian, there's obviously a lot of, uh, you know, you get huge fans from Assam, from Guwahati because of what you do. You know, you're, you're showcasing, um, you know, a huge part of the state that have obviously now been developing cricketers like yourself. So what are the reactions like back home when you do get a chance uh, to perform like that? Uh, at such a young age, do you realize what a role model you are? I mean, I mean, they're of course very happy. Um, so when I first came in, a lot of the guys didn't even know what Assam was, like mm -hmm. where Assam was. So now that I do some Bihu and, you know, it's <laughs> the culture in Assam, I think yeah. I've spread awareness of what a great uh, state Assam is and what a great culture we have. So I'm happy about that. And the role model thing, I don't really know. I think. <laughs> Come on, you can try and answer that. You, you're, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that there are a lot of people that look up to you, a lot of young kids that look up to you. I know you're young, but you've kind of grown up in the spotlight. So do you enjoy that responsibility? Do you enjoy the fact that people are watching you? Yes, yes. I love that. The spotlight, I love the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. We so, can confirm that. <laughs> the answer. But yeah, I think if I'm, if I'm able to uh, 
you know, get some get some more cricketers from Assam to play in the IPL and play at a higher level. I think I'd be more than happy. But if if I am setting an example, I think I'm very happy with that. And if if a lot of players, young players, can learn from me, I think that's a that's a really good job. Daryl, it's something that we saw Mr. Vikas mention as well, is that over the years, you know, Rajasthan Royals have always invested in youth. I mean, you've got a young captain in Sanju Samson as well. And uh, that's something that's come to the fore in the last couple of years, investing in Indian talent. So when you walk into an atmosphere like that, when you do have that sort of international experience and you see these, you know, these young kids who are ready for it, what's your reaction like to that sort of pressure sort of situations that you're kind of just all thrown into? I think one thing we notice is overseas cricketers coming to the IPL is the talent of the youth within India. Um, I've, guys like Rian and, and Yash, I've, I've never seen kids hit the ball so clean. And um, I think it's just, yeah, a real testament to Rajasthan backing these young guys and giving them chances to perform on, on the stage because we know how hard the IPL can be as a, as a youngster. But, um, yeah, the talent and the way that these guys hit the ball and bowls, it's incredible. Um, for us, coming from New Zealand, five million people seeing that, the, the billion that India have and the skills that they have, but you can see why they're so dominant in world cricket. Um, so yeah, I think it's cool that Rajasthan back the back the young young lads, and hopefully we continue to do it for a long period of time. So uh, just a lot of questions coming into you. I can read it actually uh, from the fans as well, and there's some very inspiring questions in a sense that uh, because you're in such a potent phase at the moment, you know this is a great patch. It's a purple patch. Talk to me about how you've overcome failures in the past to be able to get to these situations, you know, because your inspiring words can apply to all of us in any sort of field that we come from. And all these contest winners know how do you push through those hard times? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in cricket, you need to, to build a lot of resilience. Um, there's a lot of um, sort of failures associated with with batting especially. So I think um, trying to keep a, a pretty level head, um, you know, whether you, you're playing well or whether you're playing poorly, I think it's it's pretty important to try and maintain a, an equilibrium and not get too high with the highs or, or too low with the lows. And um, I think people around you are really important. Um, I have a sort of nice close network of people who I really trust and I can share with in, in um, you know in some tough times and they'll give me some very honest feedback both both good and bad say if I'm you know feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling my weight they'll, they'll tell me and, and why that might be so um, I think that's really important and I like I like to try and keep perspective on on the game um, you know especially you know even more recently some some great um, things have happened to me having two children and yeah. um, you know I think you know, when you have a bad day at cricket and you, you come home and, um, you know, they don't care whether you've scored 100 or, or got zero. They just want some, to play with you and, and, um, and you know, be loved. So um, that keeps great perspective on, on where the game sits really in my life. Absolutely. Uh, Rian, all your fans would like you to do the Bihu step for us, please, if that's possible. We would ask you to indulge us and teach us a few. No, no, get up and do it, bro. We can't see it like that. <laughs> I will step out. Yeah, we'll let you know. Stand up on the spot. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're in front of the whole world when the world is watching. These are just your Come on, thesis. I'll do it with you. My auntie, we also want uh, uh, Joss and Michelle also to join the meeting. I'll stay in the back. Daryl's got the shoulders going. Check that out. <laughs> there we go. There Joss we go. is going out of the camera. <laughs> Well, Rian, that was very lovely of you. Thank you for indulging us. I have to ask all three of you one tough question because I understand this puts you in a bit of a predicament, but let's be honest about this because I'm sure you're in a bubble, but you're not unaware of what people are saying. But um, Rian, over the years, you would have grown up watching Rajasthan Royals, right? And suddenly you're playing for them. So do you feel that this season, this is possibly the best squad that you've assembled because we're not just talking about the firepower that you have in terms of a batting unit but just look at the bowlers the kind of a variety that you have in attack you know with Jahel and Ashwin and Bolt and Prasid do you feel like this is the best most balanced squad that has been assembled? Um, I think we've had good squads over the years but I think the change that I've seen this year is that everyone's got the same mentality everyone wants to win the championship and yeah. that's what's been our motto from day one so I think uh, this year we are here to win it, definitely. Yeah. Darrell, what do you feel? Over the years, you would have seen that as well. You know, there are a lot of names that have won what was a blue jersey to now what is a pink jersey. Uh, why do you feel that this squad 
is as balanced as it is compared to the other years. Yeah, I guess when you when you look at the auction uh, a few months ago and you look at the squad that Rajasthan's assembled, it's yeah, it's seriously strong. It covers all bases. But um, I think for us, we're we're not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, we know that cricket's a funny game, so we're just going to try and keep showing up each game, keep trying to win the little moments, and hopefully that allows us to win some important important moments and and bring home a trap at the end. But for me, it's yeah, just not not getting too far ahead of ourselves. We're just trying to do the job, and and hopefully that brings a bit of success. Keep it simple. Okay, so Joss, everyone is putting pressure. The fans saying, when are we expecting that other century? I'll save you from that question, okay? You don't have to answer that. But give us a bit of a masterclass because when we see you batting, A, I said you build that innings beautifully. It doesn't look like you muscle the ball, but your bat swing is something else. Some of the shots that you pull out of the park are incredible. It is a masterclass in T20 batting. How do you practice it in the nets? Is there something specifically that you worked on this season? Uh, nothing specific. Um, no, for me, I always try and just work. broke parts everywhere because they really thought they could go to the nets and replicate what you've done out there. <laughs> um, no, so then, um, Harshal, who is one of my uh, works in everything, I think, yeah, but um, he's got a great throw on him. So I, I sort of take him to every training session and get him to throw balls at me. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd really work on my basics, to be honest. I work on my setup. Um, so I, before the ball is released, if, if I'm in a good position or on release, um, that makes me feel comfortable to then just watch the ball and play. Um, and so I, I spend a lot of time sort of thinking about my setup and, and sort of getting that right. And then the rest of it, I'm just trying to react to what comes down and trying to play the game, trying to read the field, um, you know, read, this, read the bowler um, and play the situation. It's been very impressive to watch your feet movement and the way that you've approached spin this season as well. Ariane, when you're watching Joss in that kind of form, you know, when he's been blazing those sort of three centuries, what were the reactions like on the bench? What was everyone saying? What were you all talking about? Um, it's like he's batting on a different track, almost. It's like, I don't know. I mean, when, when he's hitting those sixes, I think, why can't we hit those sixes? <laughs> but no, he's, he's just batting beautifully, I think, uh, in the last three years that I've been here in the Royals, I think this is the best I've seen him bat and hopefully continues to a long season. Yeah, uh, no. Mind me, I just wanted to pitch in here. Let's uh, in. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, this is for uh, the, the way he uh, closed the innings in the previous match, I think that was a uh, big turning point in the match altogether. You know, the last 20 odd runs in the last uh, one or two overs. So I just wanted to ask, and I was also reading some uh, articles on by Parag himself that he wants to be that finisher for India. So uh, I really think if he continues to play like these and helps Rajasthan finish more matches like this, I think he'll be surely looking at you know uh, playing in the blue as well. Just wanted to hear from Rian what he thinks of it and what's the passion around play, playing in blue. Um, that's the goal, sir. Um, what I said in the interview, I think that's my ultimate goal to be a finisher for the Indian team. And I think whenever I get those opportunities in the IPL or in the domestic season, I try and showcase my abilities and what I can do as a batsman and as a finisher. So just practicing hard and hoping for the best. So, Rian, who is the best finisher? In the business? Business. See you very soon. Who's the best? Who's the best finisher in the business? Who has been your inspiration or a bit of a role model that you may have picked up some tips from? It has to be MS Dhoni. I think uh, the greatest to ever do it. So, yeah, MS. I would imagine. Uh, well, you know what? Let's try and get a few secrets from you guys, from uh, your team, because the rest of them are not here and they're not watching this. So, you can tell us anything you want. Daryl, first impressions. Who is the most annoying person in your team? Jimmy Nation, hands down. <laughs> he is he's a beauty. Absolute beauty. And we like to wind him up as well because he starts to nibble as soon as you get him. So, yeah, yeah. finish whenever you want. You can just get, get him and he'll nibble back. And who is the most down-to-earth, the most sweetest, you know, uh, Joss? Oh, Sanju, I think. Sanju also, yeah. Do you need to yeah I think Sanju is pretty, pretty chill out. Thanks, <laughs> So, Joss, I have to ask you this question. I'm sure you've been asked about it like a hundred times. But the first, when you were watching that auction and you saw the Rajasthan Royals bought Ravi Chandra Nashwin, okay, what was your reaction? I thought um, I'm going to have to practice my backing up in the nets um, sort of make sure I stay in my crease. Um, but uh, no, I was obviously you know, delighted. I think when you mentioned earlier about the, the team, is it the strongest sort of side we put together? And, um, you know, the, at the moment, I was sort of fielding it long on to 
use Vandra Chahal at one minute and then you run to the other side and and Ravi Ashwin's bowling on the same team. It, it's quite amazing, really, to, to have got those two guys in, in the same side, such um, such brilliant uh, match winners and so experienced and, and a couple of the best spinners in the whole tournament. So, um, you know, I was obviously delighted having them on my team. In fact, Leon, there are a lot of players in this team that, you know, as you said, your your intentions are to eventually go on and you know play for the country and do that sort of role. There are a lot of players in this team that have been match winners for India in the past. So have you been able to have those sort of conversations with some of them? What is some of the advice or, you know, some of the takeaways from that? Definitely, I think uh, every practice session, I try and take something from like anyone. If I'm bowling, I'm either bowling with Ash or UZ. And there's like, there's so much experience there and they think about every ball that they're going to bowl. And same for the batsmen as well. So I just try and learn as much as I can on the field and off the field. So. Daryl, coming into a setup where in the IPL, it can be very difficult for overseas players, right? Because there's just a slot for, and some are already very established. So how do you keep that little bit of internal competition going, if any, healthy competition, and uh, kind of keep yourself motivated? I mean, suddenly, you get an, as I said, suddenly you get an opportunity when the team is already on track. So how do you keep yourself up to speed? Um, I think for us, because we've got such a, a close group, it's it's quite easy for us to keep working with each other. Um, we're not trying to compete against each other for spots. We're all just trying to help Rajasthan win games of cricket. And if that means on the day that you get a chance to to help the team out, then that's cool. Um, but for me, it's just I'm a competitor at heart. So any chance I do get out in the middle, it's it's just trying to win those little moments. I know it's very cliche, but um, you got to try and keep the game as simple as that. So, um, yeah, try and win the little moments. And hopefully that brings the team success. So actually, Daryl, I've got a question for you, but I'm going to ask Joss because how would you like to open besides Daryl Mitchell? Would that be fun? Yeah, it would be great fun. Um, I don't like Daryl as an opener, actually. He knocked us out of the semi-final of the, the World T20. So um, yeah. Yeah, he didn't do that in, uh, in Rajasthan colours um, with me on the same team. Yeah, it would be great for us to be able to see that as well. A few more fan questions. I'll ask you... Uh, Obviously, Rian, because I think you could take the mantle on this, so maybe you could be the judge. Who is the best dancer in this team? You don't have to name yourself. Uh, no, we know you're the best dancer, bro. We know you're the best dancer. Who's the um, second? Obed McCoy. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the worst dancer? That's the real one that we want to know. Can we dance? Trend ball. Trend ball. Really? Yeah. Oh my Feel that he's a little coordinated, it, like he thinks he's got he rhythm, thinks he's done but it. he doesn't. He's one of those guys that sort of thinks they know what they're doing, but they don't. So just keep the rhythm on the field with the bowling. That's fine. Yeah. We, we just uh, Trent should not give up his day job. All right, who eats the most in this team? Who does? I saw a lot of burgers Actually, we did have a burger night last night. It was pretty really? good. Yeah. Niche, it's fun, but niche. She's a big unit. The big units try and have to fuel the body, you know. Who is the unhealthiest eater and who is like absolutely super obsessed? No carbs, no sweets, no nothing. Who does all of that? I saw this guy the other day lying out on his patio with towels trying to sweat it up a storm. So he's definitely worried about his rig every day. But <laughs> who's the who's not the healthiest? Like who is junk? Hedy. I haven't seen Hedy. He lives in his room, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, Hedy. Let's say Hedy. Joss, what do you think? What have you noticed? Anyone kind of going um, on the there? Because it can happen in a bio bubble, I guess, you know, in a way. Yeah, I'm pretty secret eater in my room as well, ordering <laughs> sort of chocolate in from Amazon and stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Hattie, maybe. Let's say Hattie. Yeah. Okay, Darren, who has, because we've seen quite a few celebrations in your team, okay? So, they could be an internal competition. There's, of course, Yuzumendra Chahel, who is just like memeing himself. There's Mr. Parag with the yoga pose. So who's, uh, Daryl, according to you, had the most effective celebration so far? Oh, oops. Uh-oh. Can we lost you? Are back? Can you repeat the question again? Yeah. Sorry, it just froze. No worries. So I was just saying that we've had some very, um, you know, meme-worthy celebrations from your team. There's, of course, Chahel, who was just memeing himself on the field. Uh, there was Rian with the yoga pose the other day. So who's had the most effective or fun celebration uh, in the team so far? Obviously, the the big fella next to me has got some great moves and um, he's trying to get me, us gonna, to do something. We're going to collab on a celebration next week. So we'll see. Hopefully I can remember what we're doing. Otherwise, I look like an absolute idiot. But we'll give it a go. <laughs> 
Joss, who have you enjoyed batting alongside with most? Because, you know, we see you and we feel like, you know, you're, you're very tempered low and you let it literally all out in the field. But what are some of the conversations that you've had with your partners in the field this time around? Yeah, I've really, um, really enjoyed um, batting with um, Shimron Hetmeyer. Um, mm. He's been in fantastic form and um, he likes to have a lot of fun on the field. I'm sure, you know, his huge smile comes across on the TV as much as it does on, on the field. And um, he loves having fun. He, he's got a great um, sort of outlook on the game when he's out there. He just tries to enjoy himself as, as much as he can. So um, I've really enjoyed his his company in, in the middle and, and you know, watching him bat, he's, he's played fantastically well um, throughout the season so far. And um, I, I knew he was good, but he's probably even exceeded my expectations of how good he is. He's, he's been brilliant. And I have a feeling, Rian, that uh, Shimron hit my way just by be winning the best hairstyle contest, or is that someone else? Mom doesn't let... <laughs> no, it's you. Hands down, it's you, bro. Thank you. you <laughs> Mom doesn't let me do all of that, so I can't. You can't? Your mom doesn't let you do all of that? So when are you allowed to do it? When you're 21? Or 25? Yes. When he's married. When he, when, he, when he meets a beautiful young girl. If there's any good bachelors out there that are, <laughs> would like a date with Rian, we can set it up. So you have led me to the, Daryl, you led me to the question, bro. How many rishtas? Okay, rishtas is a term, by the way, guys, when you get like uh, arranged marriages and you get like families that approach you saying, please marry my daughter. So how many rishtas has Rian Parag got? That is the question. Come on, be honest. He's a very humble, quiet young Come man. Come on, tell so. us the answer. I want the answer. Which one? What the answer? Which one is going to be? His mum really wants him to marry, so we're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mum does a lot of freedom, man. <laughs> You oh, must have done. Come on, you friend. must have got some approaches, something, girlfriend requests, something must be happening. You must be getting attention from girls. How are you dealing with that? You're just worrying about betting, aren't you? Mom, mom is not watching. Mommy ji, you're not Mommy is not watching, and Auntie, I'll answer to you later. Don't. Should <laughs> <laughs> we? I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah, save it for another time. We yeah. pass that. He's got a crush, but we're trying to work on it. Yeah. Okay, let's get a little serious again, guys, because as Joss mentioned, you know, it is the business end of the tournament. It's extremely difficult sometimes to just keep some sort of consistency going. So I want to hear from all three of you as a unit. How do you plan to approach that to keep your heads going? Because uh, we're talking about return fixtures now. Uh, there are other teams that are kind of just zooming into shape. You all want to finish in that last four. Um, so Joss, I'll start with you. Are there, are there, you, I know, will say that they're all teams to be wary of, but who in particular would you keep an eye on? What sort of situations would you be keeping an eye on as you, you know, build towards the business end of the tournament? Um, well, I think obviously the, the Gujarat Titans have been um, a really impressive team uh, so far. I watched the game as well last night, the amazing finish. Um, and I think they, you know, they've managed so far in the tournament to sort of win those really tight moments. I think a couple of times, you know, um, Raul Tuati has got them home, David Miller um, last night. Atia and Rashid Khan as well so it's great games of cricket to watch and um, you know they've obviously having had that they've, they've got some great belief that they can they can really um, win those crunch moments so I think they've, they've been an impressive team so far in the tournament. You know Daryl one of the strengths of Rajasthan Royals this season has been that you were one of the teams that very early on decided that we can defend a total and that speaks volumes of the kind of bowling attack that you have and now that what's coming to the fore is teams that have a consistent bowling attack that are you know Batsmen win you matches, bowlers win you tournaments. That seems to be coming to the fore here. Right? Is that something that you need to keep an eye on as you progress in the tournament? Yeah, look, obviously, if Sanju can win a toss as well, I think at some point that will, that will help us. But, um, yeah, I think if we can keep doing the job, both whether we're batting first or bowling, um, it's, it's good signs leading into the crunch time of the tournament that we know we back ourselves in any situation and, and we back ourselves to win those little moments. So, um, yeah, for us, it's... Just business as normal, and hopefully, uh, yeah, we get a bit of success. Rihanna, I want to take you back to your previous game, particularly because again, it comes to uh, finishing innings, right? You had to set a total on the board. It was your half century that probably made the difference, getting those extra 20, 25 runs. And what, let's be honest, it was still a below par total on that wicket. But then, does it carry on to the field and the kind of performances that you had? I mean, are you completely switched on when it comes to your fielding efforts? How does that translate for you? Like, what's that process? Um, so it's very simple. I love fielding. I love taking catches. I love taking catches casually. 
So it's just something I love. So whenever we're practicing and whenever we're doing drills and all of that stuff, I think I try to do the same thing in the match and it works out pretty well. So yeah. Was it one of those days where the ball was just following you? Sort of, yeah. I got like what, four catches, a yeah, few, few uh, run out chances as well. So I love that. So that was that was really nice. Yeah. What does it feel like, Josh, when you hear these sort of young players and Sanju also? I mean, Sanju's walked out and then he's had a strike rate of like 150, 160 in the first 10 deliveries and then he explodes. When your captain has that sort of confidence and the younger Indian players have that sort of confidence, what does that do for you as an opening batsman? Because you've been setting the tone, but I mean, are you ever allowed to relax because you know what follows? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know, Sanju's led the team really well. Um, you know, I think, like you say, a you know, teams follow their leader and, and the way that they play. And and Sanju is, is one of those guys who always is, is quite attacking and likes to play his shots. And, and when your leader plays in that fashion, it, it breeds confidence throughout the rest of the side that, um, you know, everyone else can go out and express themselves, you know, obviously, with, whether that's with the bat or, or with the ball. So um, he's doing a great job in, in that sense. Um, and like you said, I think the, the talent in in Indian cricket, as Daryl said before, is, is quite scary, really, for, for the rest of the world that there's so many fantastic players and, and all getting experience to play in the IPL and um, you know, these high pressure situations. And then when they come into international cricket, they're, they're used to it. They're used to playing in front of big crowds and, and being under big pressure moments. So um, you know, it's quite inspiring to see the guys uh, uh, really, um, you know, to, to think Rian's only 20 years old is, is yeah, crazy, really. I know he acts like it, but uh, he, he plays better than that. <laughs> well, you're right. Rian has grown up with Rajasthan Royals. That's something that we've noticed. And, you know, that's what happens, Daryl. When you walk into a new team, there are so many, you know, there are already camps, there are friendships. But did it kind of help you with the fact that there was a big auction and kind of everyone was meeting everyone for the first time? Did that help you forge these sort of relationships? Yeah, I think it's a, a new team and, and a new culture that we needed to drive from the start. And it's something as soon as we got the group together that we really worked on the first few days is getting to know each other, spending time with, with all the different people, not just hanging out with the people that you've known from the past. And I think that's probably showing in the way that we play in our cricket and how much we're having fun out there in the middle as well. Um, it's a pretty cool culture that we've got going here and, and we're just having fun and, and enjoying the experience because we know that there's a, a million, a billion other people that would love to be in our position. Uh, a lot of the fans would also like to know from you, Rian, as to how you handle tough situations because, uh, you know, you also yourself came from a string of slightly under, you, you know, lower scores then and suddenly you burst onto the scene in a crunch situation. So how did you manage to mentally handle that sort of situation? I think there's obviously a lot of pressure, but one, one thing I always say is there's pressure if you think about it and there's no pressure if you don't think about it. If you just go about your game, know what the team needs from you in that given situation i think you see the right options and you don't focus on the crowds or you don't focus on what's not going to happen so just keeping it very simple thinking of what i have to do in that given situation and just going for it and backing myself Rian, this will be a tough question for you we all know that your father's played cricket as well but who do you turn to in these tough times because you posted something that your mom had sent you a message right on twitter so who do you oh, go to in a slightly tough situation do you go to your father or do you go to mom so dad gives me very uh, strategic advices, like on cricket. So, and mom speaks from the heart. So it's a mix of from both. So it works, both works for you. Yeah, both of them work, yeah. Joss, a lot of the fans are asking, I've seen the chat box that out of the three centuries you scored, which one was your favorite and why? Um, I'd say, um... Yeah, probably the one against Delhi, actually. Um, I, I really enjoyed the innings. I, I didn't feel comfortable at the start, and, but managed to come through it. And then, um, you know, we got on such a great role and, and Defta was playing fantastically well at the other end. And it was just a lot of fun. And as I mentioned before, the, the Wankady Stadium I'm really fond of and the, the crowd there was brilliant. So um, yeah, I certainly really enjoyed that. If I could just take a moment to ask all of our winners who have joined it, just please switch on your camera so that you can uh, join this as well. Uh, Darren, I'll ask you uh, uh, the next question because you had, I mean, you as a unit had an incredibly tense game against, you know, KKR where it almost went down to the middle. Then you've had instances where someone like Yuswinder Chahel has gone in and taken a hat-trick. So there have been some incredible individual 
moments of brilliance from your team. What are your reactions to moments like that? What have you carried, uh, you know, just purely as a cricketer and a viewer, which is the moment that stood out to you the most? I think, um, yeah, winning moments like that uh, gives your whole group a sense of confidence and, and positivity around how we can win little moments. Um, yeah, like Yuzzy's hat trick, for example, that over was exactly what we needed in that situation. Um, so for us, it's it's awesome to see your teammates and, and friends do really well. And, and it's sort of, yeah, I guess it just breeds confidence within this group that we can win from any situation. So on an IPL like this, where teams to have kind of just, uh, you know, changed things around where you see uh, what used to be the traditional powerhouses, Mumbai and Chennai, you know, what we call the old guard, not having that much success and the newer teams, the debutant teams doing well. Rajasthan Royals have got a new lease of life. For someone like you who still hasn't maybe, I don't even know, how, how old were you when IPL started? That was 15 years ago. So you were five. So you basically had no idea what was going on, right? Yeah. <laughs> so for you, does it, does it make a difference to see how this transition has happened this season? Um, it just shows that cricket's a very uh, humbling game. I think you can't take cricket for granted. And in a game like, in a game, in a tournament like the IPL and a format like 20 overs, I think anything can happen. And Mumbai losing eight, eight losses in a row. And I think we didn't expect that at the start of the tournament, right? So it's a very funny game and anything can happen. So we don't take any game for granted. Uh, I'll ask both you, Josh and uh, Daryl, as well, because things seem to have kind of changed this year, and you've obviously watched the IPL. You've you know been parts of it. Um, Josh, does it feel like things are changing now? Uh, there's been a transition. There's you know, it's a ten-team tournament this time around. Do you feel like there's a new guard coming in, and that includes the Rajasthan Royals, a completely revamped team this time around? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the advent of two extra teams. Is um, you know, made even more competition really just made it even tougher tournament I'd say um, you know, just adding two more teams of, of great quality um, as I say there's, there's no shortage of, of talent in India and, and of course it opens up um, doors for more overseas players to play in the tournament as well so it just strengthens the, the whole tournament it makes every game even harder I think it makes getting into the top four even harder um, so I think it's just become an even more competitive tournament um, and uh, yeah I think you know, like you say, for the, the old guard as such, you know, Mumbai and China, they're fantastic teams and um, I'm sure they'll always bounce back strongly. And, and as Rian said, T20 can be pretty unpredictable. It's a, the game where probably as an individual, you can you can sort of win games on your own more than the other two formats. So, um, you know, and with such quality in, in the teams that, uh, you know, there's, there's always those moments where someone in, individually could snatch a game away from another team. Uh, Daryl, what sets Rajasthan Royals apart from the other teams in the top four? Why are you guys different and why could you go all the way? Um, that's a good question. I think for us, we, we do have all bases covered, both with bat and ball and in the field. And I think, um, yeah, obviously uh, our staff have, have done seriously well on the auction to, to tick all those boxes. And now it's just us, about us as a group, showing up on the day, doing the job and, and playing with a smile on our faces. And, and hopefully we can bring a trophy home. Um, yeah, as Josh said, T20 is a, it's a funny game, so we'll control what we can control and, and the rest will, will be what it's meant to be. So, Rian, I'm going to request you to help me out with this because already you taught all of us the Bihu. So, uh, a request from our sponsors, from Mr. Vikas as well, and all your fans want to hear. Uh, all of our players say, Halla Bol, uh, Happy Lo Khol. So, could you help us out saying that? And teach me. Yes. So, Halla Bol, we guys all know Halla Bol, right? Yeah. We can say Halla Bol. Halla Bol. Daryl and us have to do it too. <laughs> I want you to do it together. Oh, okay. Count us in. Happy local. Happy local. Cool. Cool. Yeah. One, two, three. Hello, Hello. Happy Hello. Hello. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Um, guys, we're just about winding up. Uh, you know, from three of you, your fans would love to hear from you, a message from them. Of course, it's very difficult to not have you play in Rajasthan and be a different venue. You know, I'm sure a lot of fans have traveled. You see pink shirts in the crowd when you travel. Joss, we'll start with you. A message from the fans that have uh, been with the team and, you know, have been sending you great wishes as well. Yeah, I just want like to say thanks to everyone for, for all their support. Um, you know, we miss... Uh, playing in Jaipur and and seeing the the home fans there, but um, you know it, it means a lot to us here in in the bubble in Mumbai um, to know that we've got such great support from from our home state. So uh, please keep supporting us. It um, it really does drive the team forward. 
Darrow, from you, what does it mean to see pink shirts in the crowd? Yeah, obviously my first year with Rajasthan, so it's pretty special. And, and I'm looking forward to at some point getting to our home ground and, and playing some um, winning branded cricket there as well. Uh, but yeah, the pink's obviously, it's a pretty cool colour. and You can spot it a mile away from up in the crowd. So hopefully more of our fans from all over Mumbai will be able to get to the games and we can see a pink, pink stadium uh, going forward. Rian, a lot of fans in the crowd are doing a Bihu, I know that. And uh, you're definitely responsible for that. When you're one of the young players and you're the face of this team, um, what have the fans been like to you? What do they mean to you? I think they've been amazing. And I still remember doing meet and greets and playing in Jaipur in my first season. And the fans were amazing. And still now, I know it'd be much better to do this in person. But I think the fans have been amazing. And I hope you keep supporting us and we keep winning some more matches and hopefully uh, get us the second cup. So, uh, Joss, Daryl and uh, Rian, thank you so much for taking out the time for interacting with all the contest winners from the perspective of Hapilo. A big thank you to our sponsors as well. We've associated with Rajasthan Royals and very proud of that association. One final thing, we will be taking uh, uh, pictures, which will all be in the form of a screenshot. So, I just request everyone to give us your video. Account, the count of one, two, three. And all of our winners, I request you to use that moment to take the screenshot as well. So, on the count of uh, three, Let's go ahead with one, two, three, and give us your best. Okay, everyone had their pearly whites? Everyone had their great pictures going? <laughs> we'll do it once more in case, in case any of you missed it, okay? Uh, guys, if I could request, if I could request our players just to one more time, right? Okay, one, two, three. There we go. Thank you so much to all of our contest winners for uh, taking out the time to be with us here today, to hear from your heroes, the Rajasthan Royals. Guys, you've been incredibly inspiring this season. Josh, Daryl, and Rian, may you keep it going. Hala bol, happy local. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Thank you. Thank you.